Uh, let's start with the awkward question here, Chris. How did Reese which, Davis which push one? you out? No. How did he push you out of that college game day seat? Forcibly. It, did was, he? it was an ugly, bloody battle <laughs> that uh, went 15 rounds, and I ultimately tapped out, and that was it. Do you miss the crowds? I miss it. Yeah, I miss coming on the air the first minute of the show because I took a lot of pride in that, and game day sort of comes on the air like no other show. And and I miss the end of the show when when the guest picker is there and, of course, is putting on the headgear. And that, that's the kind of TV mayhem uh, that you cannot recreate anywhere else. I'll never have anything quite like that. I, I don't miss the wake-up calls. I mean, I was at an, in Tucson, and the group was getting up at 3.15 and, and had a 4 <laughs> o'clock car to the set oh. on the West Coast because the show starts at 6 out there. I didn't miss that. I went for a nice mountain hike, desert run at, right when the show was on out there. I, I was not missing it that day. I, I tell people that you made it look easier than what it really was and is. And Reese is the same way. I mean, there's certain people wired that way that you can't let the, the ambient sound affect you or signs or any of that. You've still got to connect with Herbie or Corso being goofy and you got to kind of reel him in and it's live. Yeah. And I, I tell people that I don't know how you can prepare for it or tell somebody what that's really like. Yeah, it's not the ambient sound in the crowd. It's the ambient sound in your ear from the producer. And because the show is not tightly formatted. It's not scripted. We don't have teleprompters. So we're constantly flipping segments. Where Now it's Pac-12. It was going to be SEC. We're going to flip the segments around. And we do that all the time. And, and uh, that's where you got to stay on your toes. There's, there's a lot of stuff that's being said. The producer's trying to crack you up. He's saying jokes in your ear. So it's not as much the crowd noise as it is just the... the the chaos on the set that you have to focus on. The difference between that and doing an actual game? Um, an actual game, you're documenting an event, so it's not about you or your opinions or the personalities. It's about describing what's going on in the field and, and trying to be clean and technically good in that department. And then, you know, setting up Herb Street, making Kirk look good. It's, it's an analyst-driven thing, a football game. So your job is to traffic cop all the endless promos and the things you have to do. And, and then hopefully you just get a good game. And if the game is good, your job is pretty easy. Um, if it's 42 to 14 at halftime, like it was last week with UCLA blowing out Arizona, then it becomes more challenging. And it's, you have to sort of like, okay, how are we going to make people not go to bed or flip the channel? And you have to become a little bit more of an entertainer in the second half and, and keep the audience. I, I do this five days a week and do football night in America. You have a lot of time when you're doing something live. How, how concerned are you with the time that you had when you did game day and did games of just saying something that you wish you could have back? Like, because you, <laughs> like you, you have no net. Yes. I mean, it, it goes and you can't bring it back. Yeah. I mean, do you, ever, you don't probably watch the show back, do you? you no. You don't, you don't self-analyze. No, 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 no. See, I do. And I think I've, I have not done play-by-play -play for 20 years like Al Michaels. I'm sure he may not look at the games back that he does, but... You know, I look back and I think it's it's constantly a work in progress. You're trying to improve and get better. So I'm a tough critic of myself. I, I'll, I'll cringe a couple of times, but during a four-hour game, that's not that bad. You, you are just saying stuff that you're reacting to what you see. You're, you're setting Kirk up. I mean, you know, college football, you know, it, I mean, it's crazy. It's sloppy. It's messy. Stuff happens you don't expect. And so you're going to have to trust your reaction in the moment. It's, it's way different than doing an NFL game. I mean, I, I watch the NFL games and the telecasts are, are fairly orderly and they unfold in a certain way. And you're not, you're not dealing with tempo offenses where you got to get in, get out, and they're playing 180 snaps in a game. Yeah. In college, I, I don't want to say that it's a lot tougher to do, but it's a lot tougher to do in my opinion. And so, you, you know, you're going to say stuff that's going to sound stupid when you play it back. And you, you know the audience sitting there saying, what the hell, what, what, what are you talking about? But it is live. And it's but then you have Brett Musburger who says something about A.J. McCarron's girlfriend at the time. Like, have you ever had one of those moments where? Um, you know, I think I've had moments doing a tennis match where it's a test of concentration because the matches can go on four or five hours. I've done a five-hour and 53-minute oh final. Yeah. Now, you know, that's a good match. You're, you're talking about what's going on in the court. But sometimes it's, you get a little loose. You know, you're, you're up there and it's a <laughs> night match in Miami and – they take a shot of the crowd and, you know, something comes to mind that maybe is off point that you'd like to reel right back in. And <laughs> in football, I mean, you got to be more buttoned up because it's, you know, you know there's more people watching and you're, you're getting scrutinized. But yeah, who hasn't said stuff you'd like to whoop, rewind, take that back? I mean, it happens every day. But in I, here, loved, I'm sure. I loved Brent. Brent, <laughs> Brent actually said what others were thinking. Now, I know we got criticized for that, but, you know, he was having fun with yeah. that. And I think people thought, well, you, you know, he's sounding creepy. Is this old man looking at this co-ed? 
That's in the ear of the beholder. And I'm going to leave that alone. I, I think that, what are you trying to get me to comment on? No, I, no, I mean. See, I, this is where your wife said, be careful what you say when you go on the program. And my wife is a big fan of this show. I know. I mean, she. I, I explained, you're not really, Jennifer, the, the, the demographic for this show. But she she's actually specifically a fan of the Danettes. Wow. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of beautiful women who watch this well, show, Chris. I, I, you, you hire these guys for their producing skills and I their did. sports knowledge. Well, not to bring the ladies in. Well, look. Tell me. Look at that group. She doesn't have a favorite, by the way, guys. Oh, she doesn't? No, oh, she loves you all on. equally. So, Because, no. see, my mom likes McLovin. Like, she doesn't. That's, that's, she loves McLovin. That's it. Has no problem saying that. Okay. Well, I mean, Jennifer loves, loves all of me. I don't believe that. So. I believe that Jennifer probably <laughs> likes Fritzy. Well, we're all Bronco fans. He, so I thought a, I had he, that yeah, He's a Denver fan, so we have yeah. that. She's yeah. not a Denver fan, though. So. Yeah. And, and I like the fact that she knows you made something uh, on this program that could come back and haunt you. You and have to change the subject right now. Or I'm already <laughs> in trouble. Exactly. So. You know what? We'll take a break here. Maybe your wife can call in. Maybe oh. Jennifer could call in. Doubtful. Oh, doubtful? Wait, Doubtful. doesn't have a phone working? A bit shy about that. That's why I'm already in a lot of trouble. So. <laughs> yes, Paul. We could get her on if you want. I mean, well, I don't. <laughs> no, please don't do that, yeah. Paul. <laughs> Look, Fowler's unflappable. Hey, Look at I it's got a him. Great, it's a great slate of college football this week. <laughs> and we'll Serena has packed it up for the season. Chris, There's things made, we could focus on. Chris, you made the mistake 12 years ago of giving me your wife's cell phone <laughs> oh. number in case I ever needed to get a hold of you. Did I give you that? Yeah, you said if you, emergency only. I think. You, I think. Well, this is changed. an emergency. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll come back. We'll look at the uh, slate of games, including Clemson, Notre Dame, that Chris will call this Saturday night on ABC. This is the Dan Patrick Show.